Happy Wednesday, brothers and sisters. Pastor Steve here. Thank you for joining me for today's devotion and our Bible reading plan. We are in the book of Psalms, Psalm 69, Psalm 69. So go ahead and open your Bible there. Hopefully you've already read Psalm 69 and written in your journal what God taught you, what God showed you, what he spoke to you and how you're going to respond to, how you're going to obey what God showed you um, in Psalm 69, how you're going to put it into practice. I also want to remind you that this coming Sunday, I resume the uh, four-week sermon series, What Happens When Jesus Comes Back. When Jesus comes back, the second coming, what is going to happen? We've already looked at two passages in 1 Thessalonians on that. And starting this Sunday, we'll be in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, if you want to read that in preparation for uh, Sunday morning. Uh, and also in our Bible reading plan, um, we've, we've recently read Thessalonians, so you should be familiar with that passage. All right, Psalm 69, you know, King David seemed to always have enemies, people who disliked him, people who wanted to kill him, people who opposed uh, who opposed him. That was true before he became king. It was true while he had king. He had enemies uh, you know, who were personal. Uh, sometimes it was political. Sometimes it was religious. There were a lot of different reasons some people disliked uh, David. And in Psalm 69, we have this very vivid description, if you will, of the pain all of this caused him, the emotional pain that he felt and and the way it worked on him. And he expresses that very clearly in the opening verses of Psalm 69. Look with me at verses 1 through 4 real quickly. He says, Save me, O God, for the waters have threatened my life. He's using word pictures and analogies to illustrate how he feels because of his opponents. He says, I have sunk in deep mire and there is no foothold. He says, I feel like water is just overflowing me and I'm stuck in the mud at the bottom of that pond and I'm just sinking down. He said in verse two, I have come into deep waters and a flood overflows me. So this is his emotional state. Verse three, I am weary with crying. My throat is parched. My eyes fail while I wait for my God. Verse 4, those who hate me without a cause for no reason are more than the hairs of my head. Those who would destroy me are powerful, being wrongfully my enemies. I mean, think about what he said. The people who hate him, he said, are more than the hairs on his on his head. Uh, he was just feeling overwhelmed. And you know, when we feel overwhelmed, things can even become exaggerated in our mind. So David, David had enemies and lots of them, but in his mind, it's just, it's like a flat, it's like a flash flood and he's drowning. So what does he do? Well, in this Psalm, he's very honest with God about what he feels. And in verses 13 and following, he prays for God to deliver him. He looks to God and asks for God's help. And in verses 22 to 28, he asks God to take vengeance on his enemies, to afflict, to hurt his enemies. And he's pretty harsh. The, the last verse, verse 28, he said, May they be blotted out of the book of life, and may they not be recorded with the righteous. God I don't want them to even be saved and go to heaven. I mean, he was really, he was really feeling a lot of uh, turmoil because of, of all this, and he and he he prayed about it. Now, let's be honest. There are times in life when you and I feel like that. It's one of the reasons we gravitate to the Book of Psalms because it really does express emotionally how at times we feel, and we need to be honest with ourselves and with God when we. Pray, But now, David did not tend to act on those feelings. And you and I as believers of Jesus, followers of Jesus, know we're not supposed to act on those. You remember what Paul said in the book of Romans in chapter 12, verses 17 and following? Listen to this. He said, never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men, never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, 
says the Lord. And, and, and so the idea is that, that we leave that to God. Vengeance is not ours. We, we leave it to God. And David was praying about it. We are not to act on it. He goes on in Romans 12 to say, But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. In doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. In other words, leave judgment to God. Leave discipline and vengeance and punishment, retribution to God. You love and do good to people. You love and do good. Now, it may lead them to repentance, but if not, they will eventually suffer under the hand of God. But you leave that to God. You don't do it. And remember what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5? I want to close with this. Um, Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse uh, 43. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Jesus, I say to you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. And Luke, I believe it is, even adds, do good. Do good to those. Okay? And so the Christian ethic is we don't take vengeance. We leave that with God. We do good to those. We serve them. We pray for them. We love them. We forgive them. But we're going to have the emotions that David had. So be honest with yourself and be honest with God. I think that's part of the process of turning that hurt and that anger into love and doing good with pure motives. So be honest and then do good. That's the word for today. I'll be with you tomorrow as we look at Psalm chapter 70.